sam pročitala da je Albert Einstein jednom prilikom izjavio Ma šta je važnije od znanja? To me je zamislilo. Pitanje za sve džake. Da li svakodnevno koristite svoju maštu? To je nova tema koja će istraživati na svom blogu. Polazna tačka bit će mi sistem obrazovanja u Danskoj, koji je mnogo neformalniji nego kod nas. Dve devojke, učenice After Schoole u Ranumu, bit će naši današnji vodiči kroz svet obrazovanja ove skandinavske zemlje. Zdravo, ja se zovem Mira Kuper. Moje ime je Maja Cija Konstantinu Melik. I'm 16 years old and I come from Hungary. And I go to Ranum After School College. And uh, me and my family, we moved to Denmark because my father, he got a job here. And I'm 16 and I'm Danish Greek Palestinian. I chose to go to Ranum After School College because I felt like it gave me a lot of opportunities. For example, I get to travel a lot while still being in the international system. So we are here today to show you around in, in the Adam Rafter School, also to show you around in the international educational system in Denmark. Hope you enjoy it. Yes, let's go. Personally, I really like math. I'm in the 10th ITCC extended course. It's uh, a longer curriculum. Uh, but and it's a lot more challenging but personally I still like it also because I am very interested in math yeah I personally don't prefer math I prefer business or history or languages but here in your school math seems so much easier because they do it in a very, teach it in a very good way so this is a 9 IGCSC class and we would like to show it to you speed of the sound is 340 meters per second. And what does that mean? It means when you see the lightning and you count the seconds, and if you count to one, from you hear, see the lightning to you hear the thunder, the sound passes 340 meters. How do you organize your classes? Um, I think I organize it with a friendly atmosphere. We start every lesson with a song. Ordinary things, ordinary things seem to help me. I want to dump you. All the ordinary things, ordinary things seem to love. But it's just without. And uh, then I go through some. Um, uh, examples and, and then I do assignments with uh, the students and then I go and, and help them of course. So hi Johanna, where hi. are you from? I'm from Denmark. And um, have you always been in Denmark? Yeah, I have, yeah. Yeah, okay. How do you like these math classes? Well, they're very different from what I had at my old school. They're a lot more organized and people are a lot more quiet here and we have a lot more respect for the teachers so we can have a lot more fun also. Hi, um, are you also from Denmark? Yeah, I am. And you always live here? Yeah. Yes. Um, what do you do in these math classes? Uh, in these math, math classes we solve equations and I sit, like, talk with my friends about the different things we're making and so on and having fun with my friends. So right now we're on our way to the assembly hall. We meet here every morning after the first two hours and in the beginning, we always sing a song or two, and then we usually read some news article and listen to the headmaster's talk. But also there is some fun part in your school. For example, we also sing a song, but the whole assembly is about the togetherness, about being together, being one unit, one big school. So yeah, let's go to assembly. Say that again. When the little blue bird, who has never said a word, starts to sing, spring, spring, rain. If that's my verse, do it, please do it. Even educated, please do it. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. Now we're on our way to Global Perspectives. And the reason why it's in the canteen is due to the exams. 
A global perspective is basically a social and political science where they hand in three times a written project about criticism and their opinions about different things. Hey Tina, what is Global Perspectives about? Global Perspectives really is uh, preparation for doing big research projects later on in life. However, the way we approach it here, as you can see, is we deal with different topics and we try and look at them from different angles. So what does it mean if you live in Africa? What does it mean if you're a woman? What does it mean if you're a man? So we look at things from lots of different angles. What are the kids are interested about? What are they usually asking you? The kids are always really interested about how it is for other people their own age other places in the world. So right now we are talking about some teenagers in New York. So they're interested in the way that their life is and what affects them. Okay, first of all, I'd really like to know where you guys are from. So. Well, I am half Danish and I'm half Thai. Um, I'm half Chinese and half Danish. Yeah. Great, so uh, why did you choose to go to Rand School? Well, I chose it because I wanted something more international since I'm half Thai. So it was kind of like a perfect fit. Well, um, you can learn Mandarin here, and also you can go diving. Both me and my dad dive, so yeah. Cool. Also, um, how do you feel about global perspectives in general? How do you feel about the class? Well, global perspectives gives you a lot of, like, you gain a lot of knowledge about how to use your sources, about, like, especially now where we have fake news, you know how to <coughs> use your sources properly. Yeah, I, lo I love global too. It's It made, this year I learned a lot of new stuff, how like you said, uh, use my sources and do some research. So today we are here at Joachim Philipsen's, the vice principal of Alma Fiskola's um, office. And let's go. Hey. Hi. Um, today we're going to ask you a few questions yeah. about the school. And um, the first question would be, um, how come there is an international department in the school? How, how, did, the, how did the idea come? The school, was, the school was founded 12 years ago and has always been very international. And traveling to other parts of the world has been very important in the whole life of the school. Um, but then four years ago we decided that um, why not make an international department so we could attract international students to do a full year, full year of study here at the school. And uh, when they've done their full year of study, then they could progress to colleges around the world or maybe even university. How was the Cambridge um, part of the school implemented into, into the international part? The, when we started the international department, we had to decide whether to do Cambridge program or do another program. But the Cambridge program fits very, very well with the Danish EFTA school. And we wanted a system that fits with the Danish after school because the, the Danish after school values and profile and ideology is what you know, really is the fundamental thing of this school. So we needed something that could combine the two. And the Cambridge program gives us this opportunity to combine after school with international qualification. We teach all math classes at the same time, all English classes at the same time. This gives us the opportunity, or the student, it gives the student that opportunity that they can do math in level two, English level one, German level three, science level four. So we can combine not only subjects, but also levels, so it fits the student. And it's very, very good. After a student finishes the Animal After School program, what is, what is her or his possibilities after the school year? It depends on what program the student has been doing. If the student has been doing IGCSE, then they are very likely to continue into A-level or IB. If the student is finishing A-level, A2 level, then the student can progress into university. So it depends on what the student is doing. But most students, when they finish here, they continue into another college or a high school in Europe or in the US. Okay, so right now we're on our way to combine science with Heine. 
He's actually one of the best teachers at the school, and he also has a PhD in biology. Hello. Hi, <laughs> Hi Heine. Hello. Um, I've got a few questions to ask you. Okay. Okay, first of all, what is combined science? Well, combined science is basically learning about both physics, chemistry, and biology. It is on a not the highest possible level in here, but it's it's fairly still complicated and we only do it, it's a two year program, but we do it in less than a year. So it's fairly uh, condensed as well. Yeah, but how do you have the, your classes like, is it one time it's biology and then chemistry? So no, we actually run it by in block modules. We've started by learning physics and then we've moved on to chemistry and now we're finishing up with the biology. So how can foreign students enter the school? Foreign students can enter the school just like any other student can enter the school. They send an application to the school and if I can see that it's an international student, a foreign student, I'll look through their transcript from their previous school, I'll look through their application and see what they want to do at the school and then take a discussion with them and then see where we can go from there. How many Danish students do you have at the school and how many are foreign and is it because of the Cambridge system? We have around 430 students at the school. Most of them are Danish, of course, but um, 110 Danes choose to do the IGCSE and A-level system, so the international uh, examinations. And then we have 50 students on top of that that are from foreign countries that come and take our IGCSE and A-levels. I'm assuming they come because of the fact that they can learn in English, the foreign students, and also come to Denmark at the same time. And for our Danish students, I think it's an opportunity to learn in English while remaining in Denmark to improve their English skills and maybe be ready for IB or A-levels or just further study in an English programme. OK, so we are here with Nikki and Emily. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Um, Nikki, where are you from? I'm from the United States. And Emily? I am from Denmark, but I grew up in Singapore. And um, how is the English teaching different in Denmark than from in the United States? Well, in Denmark, we're learning more grammar because I think people here, they know English very well, but need more push in the grammar section and a lot of analyzing. In Singapore? In Singapore, I feel like the uh, English level is a lot higher because it's for first language speaking. Where in Denmark, it's normally for people that are just learning English or have regards to learning English, so it's a bit lower level, I think. Is there a reason why you came to Denmark? Uh, I came to Denmark because I wanted to explore new options because I lived in Singapore for a very long time and I wanted to try something new. Yeah. Carl. Yeah. <laughs> I have a writer's block. Like, how do I improve my writing? Well, you know what I say at the start of the year. You have to uh, improve your writing by reading. I know. Which is your favorite thing to do, isn't it? Yes. No, it's not. No, it's no, not. It's not. I hate but remember, it. remember when I gave you that book, uh, The Marshmallow Test? The one in Jamaica? Yeah. And uh, you, it, it, as soon as you picked that up, you just completely engaged yourself in it and you, 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 you absorbed it straight away. And it doesn't really matter the type of book you're reading because the, the act of reading will improve your writing skills. So find a book like that that you're good at, that you're, that you're interested in, read that, and then this kind of thing just doesn't happen. How many languages do the students learn in the school? We are an international school, so the students have to learn Danish and English. That's mandatory. And they can choose German, Spanish, French, or Mandarin as a second foreign language. Why is it important for a student to learn a foreign language? By learning different languages, you end up learning about different cultures, different uh, traditions, and by learning different languages, you end up learning about your own language as well. So that's, that's uh, really important. What is the easiest way to learn a new language? First of all, you have to be open-minded and uh, willing to put in some work. If you can live in a country where they speak a language, that's what you should do. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like for you guys to introduce yourself in Danish. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Michelle. 
Og jeg kommer fra Spanien, og jeg har 16 år gammel. Hej, jeg hedder Wyman James. Jeg er 15 år. Jeg er kommet fra Filippinerne. Okay, so And um, so, what's it like learning Danish? Um, I mean, it's quite hard compared to other languages. I mean, it's complex and you have new letters in the system, so... I mean, I've had past experience with different languages since I tried to learn German and French. And that was quite hard at the time because I wasn't really good with English. So I had to adapt to it. Okay. So it's the same now. Okay, so right now we're at my Danish class, and I'm with the Danish teacher, Mette. Hi, Mette. Hi. I'm going to ask her a few questions. The first question is going to be, how long have you been teaching here? I have been uh, teaching here for one year. Yes. Yeah, is it your first year? It's or? my first year, yeah. Okay. How do you like it? Oh, I like it so much. There's That's so many nice students, and yeah, it's really nice to see them be able to speak Danish. Yeah. yeah. It's really good. Yeah. In this school, there are many possibilities to do whatever you enjoy to do. For example, we have a huge gastronomy room where you can cook in the afternoons in whatever you want to. Also, we have a cinema where you can watch movies and sleep there during the weekends. Also, we have a huge dining hall where we have meals two times a day. We also have three music rooms. We have a music room, a music studio, and another room we call Beat Lab where you can make electronical music. And we also have you know, uh, an art room where you can yeah. go make arts and crafts and such. Yeah, let's go see the rooms. Yeah. Okay, so right now we're in the canteen uh, where we're waiting for a table to be called up so we can go get food. And yes, there, it's divided up into two groups. So right now, Rane Hus and Kahusel are eating, and later on, there'll be Semina Hussel and Dean. Okay, so in your school, we have different varieties of food, mostly international, but mostly Danish as well. Can you talk a little more? Yeah, okay. This is Ranum Hus. This is one out of the four houses we have in Ranum. And everyone that goes to the school, they live in one of the four houses. So we all live in this perimeter, in the common area. So yeah, we would like to show you two rooms in Ranum Hus. So let's go. Hey. Hi. Living in Ranum Hus is amazing. It's um, down to earth and we all like each other and we can go well with each other and it's just, it's amazing. Great. And uh, what do you like to do in your free time? Well, um, just spend time with my friends and do some something fun or watch movies or go for a walk or, well, I like to draw and just be creative. Hi guys. So I've got some questions to ask you. The first one would be, how is it to live with four guys together? It's just falling in places um, where the time goes. Um, you're getting a routine uh, or just, um, I'm the first one in the morning that's um, getting up and then Andreas and then Bjorn. So we're just, it's just falling in places in the morning, uh, for example. Yeah. Uh, it can be tough sometimes to be three guys in this little room, but um, we get along pretty well.
Da vi verujete da se sve ovo nalazi u jednoj srednjoj školi? Skandinavske zemlje su zaista posebne po mnogo čemu. Ljudi sa ovih prostora počeli su da naseljavaju Dansku 60. godina prošlog veka, a krajem 80. verovalo se da u toj zemlji ima oko 15 naših klubova, dok danas u Danskoj živi oko 10.000 Srba i mnogi od njih pohađali su njihove after schoole. Ono što je meni svakako najzanimljivije su njihovi časovi fizičkog, potpuno drugačiji od onih na koje smo mi navikli. Okay, so right now we're in Ranbia. We're watching uh, the wakeboarding class. Yeah, so. and wakeboarding is one of the many activities you can do in uh, Ranum after school. So, <laughs> here we are. Yeah. And uh, that's currently mess on the out there in the lake. And he's learning how to turn for uh, wakeboarding. Out of all the activities that are available at the school, why did you choose wakeboarding? I chose wakeboarding because I love water and I love to surf and I love to wakeboard. So yeah, that's why. And I think it's it's really nice to give this to the kids that they can they can feel this experience themselves. Okay. okay. And what do you like most about wakeboarding? Oh about wakeboarding is that you can do it in all kinds of weather. If you're surfing, then you have to there was you have to have great waves. But wakeboarding, you can do it all the time. Uh, so that's really really fun. And yeah. Um, are you cold, Miss? Uh, no, nah, I'm a little bit. When you're in water, you don't think about it. You just think it's awesome. Is wakeboarding hard? Um, some people say I don't. I don't know. It's my third time. So. Have you done it before? Before I left school? No. And what is your advice to the ones who who haven't done it before but want to? Um, I would say to to definitely practice your balance before going out, and uh, it's just about trying it actually. Okay, so this is Fit for Life Stronger. It's one of the many possible profile subjects you can choose with Anam after school. Uh, for their travel, they're going to be going to Iceland and they're going to be traveling with some of the strongest men in the world. So what is Fit for Life? Well, the Fit for Life and the Fit for Fight Stronger are classes where we work on physical training. Uh, martial arts, weight training, strongmen and CrossFit to give people a chance to learn about their body and learn about how strong they can get. Okay, and uh, why would you recommend it to other students? Well, I don't recommend it to those who really want to, but those who want to try to you know, really get in shape and to become strong, it's a nice possibility because you live here, you eat here, so it's, uh, it's easy to get in very good shape if you want to and get really strong. So now we are at cheerleading, which is my professor subject, and I chose it because first of all we're going to America as our culture trip, and it's loads of fun, and we're training for some events as well. So let's see what they're doing right now. So now we have a professional cheerleader here. Hi. Um, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Jonas and uh, I'm 18 years old. I'm born in Denmark. What do you usually do in the classes? Oh, in the cheerleader classes? Yep. We normally, we tumble, doing uh, flips, uh, and we stunts, we throw with each, each other. Well, how do you feel about, about cheerleading? I just like it. There's a lot of uh, togetherness in it and yep. you have a lot of friends. Thank you, Jonas. How Hanan to school has changed me as a person? Well, it has changed me in many ways. So, for example, I've become a lot more social as a person and I've become a lot better at working with other people and yeah, just group work in general. I've become a lot more confident as a person. I think 
I don't know if this could have helped me become more independent so I don't have to socialize all the time since I'm surrounded by many people. Also, I, don't have, I can do work alone. And I think it prepared me really well to next year so I can start IB Diploma. Is that all?